10 Cloverfield Lane or the time I found a roommate on Craigslist. <laughs> oh. Sadness. Uh, okay, is everybody ready? Yes. Yeah, great. Okay, so with that, hi and welcome to the Hype. With host always, Brian Dressel. With me as always is Chewy Darso. Hi. Ryan James is back. Hello. And John can't be here today because he was so fed up with Ryan not being here, he decided to go out and find him. And whoops maybe we're the same person he got oh, lost maybe. in the wild of canada i just we, i changed my glasses <laughs> and now i'm ryan again <laughs> poor john he should be back next week but we'll see with us uh since god how long ago was that episode i don't know you tell me it was a long time ago it was uh we did dazing and fuse right yeah, Daisy yeah Confused. maybe three months jackie months? i'm forgetting your new last name trudel right. trudel 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 yes got it <laughs> I'm going to forget that again. <laughs> I okay. apologize in advance. Okay. Uh, hi, Jackie. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. <laughs> uh, and then for first time guest ever, we have Brett Weiner here. Hey, everybody. How hi, are Brett. you? Good. How are you? Good to be here. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, we're just going to be moving right into where have you been doing. Is that all right with everybody? So yeah. okay with that? Sure. All right. Uh, we're going to go a little bit different this time, though. Brett, where have you been doing? You can go first. So I just did this cool thing in downtown L.A. called Monkey Town L.A. Mm -hmm. And what this is, it's like a moving kind of art exhibit. And it's basically a cube uh, uh, of video screens that you sit in. And then you have like a three or four course meal, depending on the night, with like wine pairings. So you like buy a ticket. (laughs) You go to this weird abandoned factory with a bunch of other hipsters in downtown LA, and then you sit in, people serve you things, food, and the food's great, and then they have kind of like video art play as the the evening goes on, and in the middle of the evening, they have like a some sort of, oh, that's embarrassing, um, <laughs> some sort of, um, you know, art piece, so like it was like a modern dance piece, so it was like watching cool sort of installation art while eating great food while drinking wine and just uh having a chat with people and that was a really i really enjoyed it it was really cool what is this called again monkey town la it sounds like it's either something we would absolutely love or just like to make fun of yes it potentially you would go there and be like what the hell is this arty crap but <laughs> i like I arty like, crap when it's good arty crap i like arty crap too that so sounds like the most hipster thing I've. it ever was heard. definitely <laughs> the most hipster thing it was run by a guy his first name was montgomery oh boy so uh. <laughs> uh, you sure it's not in silver lake <laughs> <laughs> it was it originally started in brooklyn and then it's been traveling so oh, it's, that like, makes sense. it's like yeah. the original homegrown hipster thing but it's you know if people are into kind of like cool different experiences they show a lot of different types of video art on the thing so if you don't like something in like two or three minutes it'll change to something else um and that was what i was doing that was super cool that i really enjoyed that is actually pretty awesome but i am sure i will never do it (laughs) (laughs) Uh, we should do it next weekend you can (laughs) (laughs) i mean if you were to buy tickets to it i would go or Ah. or how does it work i do make you go to things yeah I, i would do it maybe uh, if I don't have to work. Uh, Jackie, what about you? Where have you been doing? Um, I hope I'm not stealing someone else's thing, but I, like I just binge watched Stranger Things on Netflix. <sighs> I still haven't done it. Yes, everybody's really? thing. I, I haven't have... watched it yet. Oh, man, it's this so This is good because it's I haven't so either, good. and I don't want to hear any spoilers. I need and to so... start well, watching it when I let the rats it, out. But you need to watch it. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. That's I what I've been told. Great. Like, it, it's a great uh, piece of, with children, uh acting really well and it's a great uh, monster story but the best part about it is how solidly planted it is in the 80s yeah Yeah. I love it I mean the props the set dressing I've seen some things where they have had stills comparing some of these stills to different movies from the 80s Mm -hmm. and how they're just like paying homage to so many different things and I don't really feel like it spoiled anything for me because I have no idea the situation in the Mm -hmm. show so it's just like it looks really well done I don't think the story would have worked if it wasn't based in a time where cell phones weren't a thing. Oh, for sure. Oh, there's so many that's, things you can't do That's the only meme I've seen going around is like, yeah. if this took place today, it's like, oh, one episode and it's done. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of like yeah. how Breaking Bad wouldn't work in any other country in the world. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You're cancer. Now we're going to help you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Chewie, what about you? Yesterday, I rewatched uh, Stardust. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like that movie. I love that movie. <laughs> that's the Matthew Vaughn. One, mm-hmm. right yeah I, I remember seeing that and being like why aren't people liking this movie i don't well it's very different from the from the graphic novel it's a legit graphic novel not a comic by the way right to, I, I to do my nerdiness 
Um, yeah, they can't but the original story is very like adult fairy tale, like original grim, like mean things are happening and it's not the cheeriest thing. And then they made the movie and it's really like lighthearted and cute and mm-hmm. colorful and la di da. And I loved it for that. I like like when someone adapts something and they make it different while it's still really good and true to like form. Uh, well, I don't know true to form because they changed it so much, but. It's just so much fun. It's such a great romance. Like you said, you liked it. Yeah, yeah. It was a great romance. I just remember it had like a little bit of the swashbuckling, but I don't think it, if I remember, I haven't seen it in a long time, it totally eliminated all the dark moments of it, you know? There are some dark moments in the movie, but they're but surrounded overall, by lighthearted, so... They also, have... I, I, didn't, I never read the graphic novel. Yeah. Um, so it's I, a good read. I really recommend it's it. It's a gaming, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I should read it. Like, um, the best part of it... Good shit. I like how it's kind of like a rat race sort of thing where all these different people <laughs> are going after Claire Danes, the quote unquote star. And there's so many little montages of all of them just like charging forward to get to the same spot. And even though they do it like three times, each time I'm fully invested in it. I'm like, oh no, who's going to get there first? Who's going to be able to do this? And, uh, and just seeing Charlie Cox before everyone knew who he was. He was I loved him immediately in this movie. Mm. And then when he got to be Daredevil, I was just like, it's going to be so weird seeing you play something so serious. And now I don't think I can watch him anything else. Yeah. He is Daredevil. Yeah, no one he else totally that is. character. But yeah. he was Tristan first. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do find it weird that you say you haven't been doing anything and you still have not talked about Ghostbusters on this show. Oh. Yeah. But too bad you burned up where have you been? Oh, no. <laughs> on some of you have seen a thousand Shoot. times. <laughs> uh, go see long Ghostbusters because it was amazing and everyone else who craps on it is stupid. I liked it. I dug it. It had a moment that brought me a little bit to tears. I was just like, oh, this I've needed this in my life for so long I didn't even realize how badly I needed it. <laughs> what up, Kate McKinnon? Oh. Uh, Ryan, what about you? Where have you been doing? Well, uh, unlike... Uh, the lies you've been telling on this podcast. I don't know what you're talking about. It's all been spot on truth. You definitely you might have died to, like 300 I, times. I, I you definitely actually, went to the wrong Bermuda Triangle. I, I did go to the Bermuda Triangle <laughs> and traveled back in time to 1999 because I've been catching Pokemon and listening to Blink-182 all month. Nice. <laughs> Both of those things have been amazing. Pokemon Go is a lot of fun. Really stupid app, but has anyone talked about it yet on the Oh, show? yeah. John okay. talks about it all the time. Okay, good. After <laughs> so, It was funny. The first time we talked about it, I was like, I hate it. It's stupid. Yeah. I'm like, really? Oh, it's really stupid. And then he's but like, it's no, very addicting. It. And now I'm level 20, and I have all the rare Pokemon, and I'm getting there. Oh. And then the new Blink-182 album is fucking fantastic. I haven't listened it's, to it yet. Uh, the best, one of the best albums of the year so far. Wow. Can I just say that? Yeah. The hardest thing about playing Pokemon Go is hiding that I'm playing it. <laughs> when I'm on the yeah, yeah. It was so it's fun like when we were in itself. San Fran, being like, "Those people are catching Pokemon." Yeah. yeah, you just know the action now. When someone's sitting looking at their phone with a dumb face and swiping their finger up, yeah. you know they're trying to catch. I've a been Pokemon. trying to master the thumb catching things with my thumb, oh, so yeah. people think I'm just. Oh, people are going to get that weird purple tunnel thing in their thumb. Yeah, I already yeah. have it. You hear it popping? <laughs> that actually came. It's in. My, my Pokemon <laughs> Go thumb. Uh, I gave up on that game pretty much immediately because I, I get really even mad at games it. that don't work. There's yeah. not enough room on my phone. So. I have enough room, but like I try to play on launch day and it mm-hmm. just kept crashing. And I'm like, all right, well, fuck this game, and I have not gone back. Yeah, it's it's good now. It's I've scary. heard that. It is good now. I mean, by good, I mean it, the the bugs are fixed. I totally believe you, but I feel like I'm just saving time by not doing it. You are, for sure. <laughs> it's like, uh, the, but it's become the thing that I do instead of like checking my Facebook or emails while I'm standing around doing nothing else on my oh, phone. I, I don't have anything wrong. I think it's probably a really smart app. Yeah. It looks like it's a lot of fun, but I just like, you know what? It's kind of like uh, like the first time somebody offered me shrooms. I'm yeah. Like, you know what? I don't think I need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I, I, maybe for a few days I would fire it up like because I desired to play Pokemon Go. Now I just turn it on when I'm out, and I'm like, oh, there's probably Pokemon around here to catch. Yeah. And then I put it there's back Pokemon away. on our stages. Some of the really? actors, <laughs> yeah, the actors in between shots would be like, woo, I got a Charizard. Oh, <laughs> the best part about it is, like, using the AR. I usually have that off to save battery because it's easier to throw the balls, but the best part about it is, like, putting the Pokemon on the screen in funny places in front of you and then taking a screenshot. Oh, I've seen lots of dick pics in the way of Pokemon. Lots, lots of you diglets. Have? Yeah. Lots diglets. Of, <laughs> lots of diglets on people's Oh, eyes. you're so funny. Hey, baby, send me your diglet pic. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Uh, okay, so for my Where Have You Been Doing, uh, I could talk about Ghostbusters or Star Trek Beyond or oh, any of the Trek other Beyond. movies. Why am I not thinking about these? Like Lights Out that we saw. All oh these wonderful... God. Oh, things I'm I just forgetting about. everything that I'm doing. Yeah, you saw a movie yesterday. What is this, a movie, movie podcast? It actually made it a little hard to sleep last night because yeah. there was a part of me that was worried. As soon as you turn just... out the lights, it's like, oh, yeah. God. Ah. Yeah. Was it good? It's decent. So it's, a, 
it's not anything groundbreaking. Yeah. But for a nice like hour and thirty minute monster movie, hour it was 20. very effective. Yeah, it's it I does not over it. yeah, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's well made. It's definitely it's a first time director, but that's definitely and it didn't rely exclusively on jump scares, which is what I was worried about. Mm, like they definitely created a good sense of dread. That's um, awesome. But instead of just talking about those, which, you know, I love my horror movies. But I have to talk about a little book I've been reading. Uh, I'm not that far in it, so I can't, shouldn't judge too harshly. But uh, so far, it's been utter garbage. Uh, Harry Potter oh, man. and the Cursed Child. Oh no. oh, no. You didn't say it was that bad last night. It's not good. You read well, more. I wasn't feeling very well last night. So really, just any answer was meh. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's just that it's. Uh, it could just be the format of like trying to read the script. The characters just don't come across as well as they used to in a book, so it's kind of harder to get yeah. into it. Um, so maybe if I were to see the play, it'd feel differently. But they they really want to tell a story about like a middle aged child of Harry Potter, but instead of just jumping into that, they have to explain how he got from A to B. So the first oh. act is all just like. He's uh, year one, year two, year three, and it's all going by lightning fast, and the kid just gets so angsty and grumpy, and I'm like, I just hate this kid. Yeah. And then Harry Potter turns into a dick, and I'm like, I don't want to watch Harry Potter be a dick. <laughs> like, they have the whole, like, I wish you weren't my son, well, I wish you weren't my dad argument. It's like, what the fuck is this? Does, like, do parents, I always thought that was a fake thing. I never know well, anyone. Harry Potter's not a real story. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So yeah, it's but fake. that fight, like I've never, I never had that fight with my parents. No, neither did I. But uh, well, you probably like, have good parents. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, well, that's the thing that you're saying. It's like, how dysfunctional do you have to be as a character to have that fight? Like, yeah, if you're having that fight, then Harry Potter maybe was like a terrible dad through sure. all his life and was yeah. never a good person. Well, that's and, and kind of like ruins that because he has two other kids that are all that are both fine, but this right. one he's just shitty too, and it's like, I don't oh. Know. Like, I loved Harry Potter. Like, I don't want to watch him be a shitty dad. Is, is the cursed child just Harry Potter literally cursing at his child? <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm not far enough in there, but I believe the cursed child is his son's best friend. Oh, gotcha. Because this whole subplot about is his best friend Draco Malfoy's son, or is he a time-traveled son of Voldemort? And I'm not kidding. That is an actual plot line in uh, this. I, he was telling me that last night, and I was like, that sounds so stupid. Yeah. So like I said, I'm only 50 pages in. It could get better from here. I've heard both that it's wonderful and that it's garbage. Right now I'm leaning towards garbage, but I will finish it because it's Harry Potter, and I've not ever only read one of these books once. The only one I've only read once is five. The rest of them I've read north of four or five times each. So like, mm. I, I'm a Harry Potter fanboy, so I have to finish it, but... Do you think this is going to be like a, a Hobbit or a trilogy kind of scenario where you either like the Cursed Child or you like the other books? I guess it could be possible, but I, I don't. I don't no, see anyone not. like loving this book just because it's a script. If it was a book, maybe. Mm. But the fact that it's a script really kind of it pulls me out of that it. That was an interesting choice. Yeah, I well, mean, it was a choice to make money. It was a choice. I wrote a script. <laughs> I don't feel like writing a book, yeah, so no, let's just put the script in a book. Yeah, <laughs> releasing it was the choice to make money, but. I think it was a choice like I'm J.K. Rowling and I do what the fuck I want. Like I'm not oh, going to yeah. give you a book because you want it so bad. Yeah. So if she does ever release a book again, hotcakes. There you go. Hotcakes. Business I mean, decision. Yeah. She she can make all the money she wants just by yeah. releasing these things. But she said she's done with Harry Potter after this. But that's what she said after she the last. She said after too, the Harry so. Potter too. Yeah, she's yeah. done with Harry Potter the way that Cher retires. <laughs> 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 you think she says it, and next year there's another billboard. She's done with Harry Potter the way Kevin Smith is done with Jay and Silent Bob. Right. Uh, Always yeah. comes back to it. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. There'll just be more out of money. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, here it comes. There'll yeah. be more like Pottermore things. I feel like oh, always yeah. cropping up. And I mean, there's, fuck. There's a movie come out in November. It just doesn't have Harry Potter in it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But I'm sure she's cashing a huge check off of it. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay. So are we ready to move in today's episode? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, so today's episode, if you did not pay attention when you download it, was Ten Cloverfield Lane. Um, the movie that I think is the most mistitled movie in history, but we'll oh get God. into that. Yep. Um, this movie cost, don't know, because they didn't tell Box Office Mojo, therefore I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it made a hundred and eight million, which I'm sure it cost less than that. For sure. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. They uh, they made their multiples of their money back. Oh yep. yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's um, the special effects at the end were decent enough to where I, I'm sure they spent somewhere around twenty would be my that's, bet. Yep. That's what um, I think. But I don't know. I don't know why some movies just don't tell the budget. I've never looked into why they don't do it. But 
I don't feel like it. They like I, to be secretive. I mean, for a studio that is doing horrible these days, Paramount really needed a win, and this mm-hmm. was a good win for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they did Turtles, which was not a win. So. <laughs> not a win. We could do a whole podcast on foolish franchise decisions. We could do a whole podcast on Paramount and why it's going to be bought by Fox here soon. Because there you go. they are just circling the drain. Poor, poor Paramount. Maybe they'll sell the Fantastic Four to afford it. Well, no, they don't own it. That's Fox. Fox, Fox will sell the Fantastic Four to afford Paramount. Ah. Oh, that probably I not. I like that them. scenario. <laughs> Uh, Probably not. I'm pretty sure anyone can afford Paramount right now. Fuck, we should buy it. After the hype presents Paramount. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. That would be a lot of things that I want to deal with. <laughs> like, like Transformers or just you don't want to deal with Paramount Oh, can studio? we just get rid of Transformers? Yeah, we're going to pull Fuck the plug out. Stop making things. those movies. Oh, my God. I'd suddenly love Transformers. If I can make the money they make off Transformers, it's not my favorite thing in the world. Well, then, okay, we make 10 more. Yeah, there we go. I hate them so much. But with no-name actors. Yeah, you Stop should just paying people to be in these. Yeah, you should for just, sure. Uh, cash in and do like the lowest common denominator Transformers. Like, really, just have it be like metal crashing for an hour and a half. Just but that because that's, that's what it is. What already, it has but like, really take it to the extreme. Like, oh, no, no characters. You mean take out the, the eye candy? Take out everything else and just uh, have it be. Metal or just crashing. have like big metal dumpsters just bumping into each other. Who <laughs> owns the rights <laughs> to um, uh, the cats? Thundercats. The cats? Thundercats. Or I don't know who owns that. Dang. I don't know, <laughs> that'd be a good, Who the right I'd to be cats? Because they're fucking loaded right I now. I was actually thinking <laughs> doing Thundercats in Cats the musical. <laughs> <laughs> you need to call Thunder Robot Chicken. Gone. You need to call Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly a Robot Chicken yeah. sketch. That's phenomenal. Anyway, yeah. what did you guys think movie. of 10 Cloverfield yeah. Lane? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to read the uh, the review really quick. comes from mm, 007 uh, <laughs> This is going to be good. <laughs> Uh, this is on Metacritic, and I, I picked it solely just based off the title of mm, 007. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gave it 3 out of 10. He said, pros, good thriller. Second, uh, The second pro is the first and middle half were... Sorry. First middle half was good. Uh, I got it. Wait, the first middle half. I'm reading what? it verbatim how he wrote it. Okay. Or she. That's it's open to interpretation. Yeah. yeah. First middle half was good. Okay. Period. Uh, cons. Climax was completely bogus, could not find any strong meaning of the story, and second half was boring and monotonous. What? Oh Interesting. Did they we watch, watch the, the wrong movie? movie? Yeah. 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 I don't think they saw the same thing that I did. I would never they, say the second half is boring no, or monotonous. No. no. Or there this, might be some odd choices in there, but it's definitely not boring. doesn't understand the feeling of impending rape. Yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm guessing if that's what we're going, then I'm guessing it's a dude who's like, ah, she's fine. He just <laughs> wanted to be your dad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a lot of, like, I love the, the pacing of this movie, and uh, I love the idea of somebody being like, it's boring because they're in the same place. Why are they oh, still that, in this place? My little cousin would definitely oh, feel that about I this. Love There's Bob so many episodes. good movies that take place in one room. Yeah, absolutely. Room. <laughs> room. I've never seen actually room. seen the room. What? I didn't see that too. Twelve Angry Men. No, 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 I was going to no. say Twelve Angry Men. The Man room is... and room are two whole different movies. I haven't right. seen either. Okay. <laughs> I've she's seen... never seen the film Room. She's also never seen the Room. Okay. Which is see probably room. better than Room. Let's the be film honest. The Room. With pre See Room. Yeah. Don't see the Room. See no, both. definitely see the room. double feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be an amazing double feature. <laughs> it really would. I don't Give know which one you start with. Let's just so you know, both movies about Room take place in more than one room. It's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. So well, I, I don't even know what the room that. is. In even the room. the room? I mean, even the Breakfast I'm, Club, they leave the room. Well, yeah. Otherwise, you don't have him screaming, I want to be an Air Force Ranger. Yeah. He wants to live a life of danger. Yeah. Uh, all right. We're going to do the breakdown, breakdown, breakdown. Brett, you excited for this? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I wrote some notes that I'm not referring to, so I'm going to screw I'm it all you. up. <laughs> and it's going to be awful. And you, have you know what? At you least you're your really excited shoulder. about it. <laughs> yeah, you can tell by my my tone of voice. Um, I've got a lot of faith in you. We're going. Are, are we all recording? Are you going to give me countdown? Counting in? Uh, I will probably start to screaming "Go!" at you at some point, and then you have to <laughs> go, 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 go. Okay, that was it. That now? now? Yep. Oh, you're three seconds in. Uh, so there's Michelle who leaves her wedding ring on a table and is escaping something when her fiance Ben calls her. She's run off the road and hit by a car. She wakes up in a bunker with her leg immobilized, and she's been kidnapped or you don't really know by this guy Howard and Howard claims there's been an attack and it has killed everybody and then uh, she meets this guy Emmett and then Emmett gets shot because they're trying to escape and then she goes out of the bunker and escapes Howard and then she fights a bunch of aliens that sound like Half-Life 2 and then she escapes to Houston okay (laughs) 
Man, you really brought that together at the end. Yeah, I, I, I skipped some parts. <laughs> <laughs> you did skip some parts, but I mean, ultimately, you finished it. If I had those other three seconds, man, it would have been glorious. <laughs> I mean, you, you succeeded, so I'm saying it's pretty glorious, because it did not seem like you were going to in the first 15 seconds of that. Yeah, I had so. to compress. I, I don't know. Anyway. So, well done. If you'd like to make fun of me, you are welcome to do so now. If you have an insult you want to throw my way. Um, your beard is dumb. <laughs> You've gotten that How did I do? Once. That's usually the where they go for. It's like, ah, beard. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you have glasses on and I wear glasses. So obviously I'm not going for glasses. Yeah. You got to go for the beard. Got to go for the beard. Hey, whatever works for you. Yeah. So we should get started on this thing. Uh, where would you guys like to start? Is there anything specific that really stuck out to you in this that you want to start breaking well, down immediately? Well, do you want to talk I, about the, uh, the, whoa, whoa, the a lot of release yeah. and the hype? Leading oh, yeah. yeah. Let's oh, do that. Because be. then we can... What? <laughs> I was going to say, like, with the hype and everything, for me personally and for John, who's not here, uh, we were both huge fans of... Dan Trachtenberg. Dan Trachtenberg originally on... Okay, my, my Attack of the show. Totally that rad show. There, it is. there we are. Because mm. I can't Getting think my internet anything. Shows mixed up. Yeah. yeah blah, blah, blah. Uh, so the totally rad show was a <laughs> podcast that was like, other than Dignation, really the only podcast I ever fully got into. Thanks. Uh, oh, shush, I'm on this one. Uh, and I remember Dan Trachtenberg and all of his funny quibs, and they had an entire segment on that sh- podcast that was called "Make Dan a Man," uh, and I kind of wish they had tied into made another special episode about Dan making his first feature film could mm. making him a man it would have been hilarious uh, but for me there's a ton of buzz and hype personally because of that uh, and then I, I know for everyone else it was just because it was supposed to be the sequel of Cloverfield well the, it was it was all the timing thing right like I, I don't remember exactly I just remember all of a sudden you're like oh this movie's coming out in like a month or two it was like there was some shortened window in which they they were hyping it up, right? Well, they did it kind of like they did the first thing. one. Well, the first one, the trailer came out before the first Transformers movie. Mm-hmm. It was like, you go to see it, and then randomly, yeah. it didn't even have a title. It's just like 118, then whatever year it came out. Yeah. And it was like, mm-hmm. what the fuck was that? <laughs> it was yeah. like this found footage thing where the like Statue of Liberty's head just comes careening down a street. Yep. Yeah. It was and found footage when we still liked that. Yeah. Right. It was, all, <laughs> it was kind of the beginning it was kind the of the end of found Like, I think a lot of people were like, oh, why did it have to be that way? And they would have preferred it to not have been found footage. But mm. I, I mean, I could see really that well. argument, but at the same time, I think they did a good job with it. I so, do too. Yeah. Totally. yeah, it was one of the I few that I really Field. liked it. Yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. saw it in theaters when yeah. it came out, and then yeah. when I heard that Ten Cloverfield Lane was coming out, I was like, oh, yeah. all right, yeah, now I'm. Well, gonna yeah, see I was this. totally into it, but I yeah. I agree with a uh, friend of the show, Mari, where it's if they hadn't titled it Ten Cloverfield Lane, I think ninety percent of the suspense would have been way more there. Yeah. Well, yeah. didn't they? It was a it was a different script that they just yeah, ended yeah, up retitling totally. yep. Ten Cloverfield Lane to kind of buy into this Cloverfield universe, which yeah. we should talk which, about too. I mean, and that works, and it did work, but it, it's when we're talking about like the hype and that sort of stuff. I think if this movie didn't have the title of Ten Cloverfield Lane, it wouldn't have made the hundred plus million. Definitely not. That it. it had. I wonder what ending it had yeah. before it became a tie-in. Yeah, <laughs> and I can. It almost feels like it was not titled Ten Cloverfield Lane until way later in production. Oh, I, definitely. The, I, I'm they didn't tell guessing the actors, right? that when they filmed it, the end of the movie, when the mailbox goes mm-hmm. flying in the street, was the first time you were supposed to realize this is related to that. Yeah, that would have been great. I'm not gonna lie. Like that I agree, reveal yeah. would have been better than having the title. But that that's not really a reveal. <laughs> like if I was watching that movie and then I saw that mailbox, I'd be like, I guess this is related to the first Cloverfield song. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That was the <laughs> first time that you went, oh, J.J. Abrams? Like, that would have been interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the or idea. Like, no, I get why they were the same, or you know. Yeah, I, I like the idea of, like, a franchise that has, like, this meta narrative of, like, secret movies yeah. that you don't really understand how they're connected, yeah. really, that yeah. are just more like a Twilight Zone style kind of franchise i think that's really interesting and just yeah, telling different stories about yeah. the same situation but how they each person survived it in a completely different way because mm-hmm. most well, of the time with sequels they all survive it in a similar situation they're just dealing with the same monster and this isn't mm-hmm. even the same monster i mean clearly I mean, it's, it's post a, that monster well it's it's exactly what i mean john goodman describes it in the movie you attack the big populated areas with one big thing first so the mm-hmm. aliens dropped off a huge fucking monster and then they do the sweeping things out this little tiny monster and spaceships mm-hmm he explains entirely what's going on. Yeah. And it's cool. Like, like they never, works. they never, it's interesting because they, I was reading a little bit last night and they were saying like, this all takes place in the same universe, but they never directly correct, connect the first Cloverfield to it. Like they never say like, 
oh, it's another attack like the huge monster attack. And right. it's almost like that would almost ruin it for me because the whole beginning of the movie, Mary Elizabeth Winstead is like, this is weird. Like, this guy's just straight up abducted me. But if I lived in a world where a giant skyscraper knocking over a monster came down and yeah. destroyed New York, I'd be like, oh, no, there could be totally an alien attack. That would kind of make sense. I just assume that yeah. that entire attack is happening while she's driving away. Right, it's like so the same So she's time. not listening to the radio yeah. or listening to her phone. She's not answering her phone, so no one's telling her that's happening. Well, that's right. kind of what I assume is going on, too. I mean, yeah. who knows? But that's kind of what I figure is happening. So it's like a side quill. Yeah. yeah, I don't really know how how long is she in the bunker? Did they ever say? I get well. You get to see that her her leg gets better and uh, John's head heels. almost heals all the way. So I assume it's definitely like a month and a half, maybe even a little bit longer, yeah. possibly. Yeah, a stretch between a couple weeks and a, um, a couple months, probably. Yeah, like not like a year or anything like no, that. No, no, definitely no. not. It doesn't seem there like is that. one flaw I want to point out. If these two movies happen during the same time period, one in two thousand eight, the other in 2015 mm -hmm. wouldn't her apple iphone be different <laughs> she got in a vintage iphone uh, so, fair. you know and also because i just rewatched it yesterday mm -hmm. for this podcast she's on the speakerphone with her fiance but the speakerphone button is not on Ah, uh, production flaws. <laughs> Boom. What is this? Cinema I noticed sins? that. Come on. I'm looking at Chewy. That seems like an art department. Hell, that's props, okay? <laughs> I don't deal with that. Props. To be fair, that's me. probably just post effects. Yeah, I mean, it was. Whoever's yeah, in like, the post. special effects needs to just go. They always uh, try to get you to do yeah. the cell phone stuff live on set, and it never works right. out right. No, it doesn't. I don't know why I they hate that. They keep oh, wait, trying to make us do it. I hate it. Of ourselves. Listen, if you guys watch Mr. Robot, it's all in the computers, and it looks gorgeous. So, is that. Well, someone. Fucked that? up. That's what I'm saying. It has, but I haven't watched that yet. Yeah, I think it's either. two episodes in. Um, but but yeah, back to like the the grand like hype meta narrative yeah. of that. Like I I like like J J Abrams having like a secret film series, and I think it would be interesting. Like I'm not that interested in seeing a sequel where Mary Elizabeth Winstead fights a bunch of aliens in Houston. Not at all. No, I don't need to see that. No. I am interested in seeing like a weird. Twilight Zony, maybe parallel university to connect everything kind of thing that has like all those elements of mystery. Um, I think that would be really interesting. So I, I'd be totally fine with something that like, you know, nobody's really trying to retrofit these these movies uh, together. And did you ever play? Uh, do you play video games at all? Yeah. Uh, do you ever play Resistance Three? I did not play that game. Okay, so I'd be more interested in a movie kind of like that. So the Resistance One and Two are all about like the aliens coming and the people fighting them. Resistance Three takes place like. 30 years after that, mm -hmm. when the aliens have essentially won. Mm -hmm. And I think that'd be kind of a fun way to do the Cloverfield 3. It's like way, way after, and people are kind of living underground, and now they have to deal with, there's aliens who basically own the Earth, and they're trying to fight back. I don't care about Mary Elizabeth Weinstein oh, anymore. Like so She was great, but... Cleopatra 2525? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just going to say no, because I don't want to give you credit for that. <laughs> they're uh, living underground, and they fight the aliens that took over the surface. Good for them. <laughs> I think uh, I like bringing that show up to 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 bounce off that idea. I think the thing that would be interesting would be that movie set in current day, and you don't know at the beginning that the oppressors are aliens. Oh, mm -hmm. that'd be cool. Yeah, for sure. And then you find out like at the end they're aliens, and like, oh, this is like another Cloverfield weird alien thing. We don't know how it's all connected, and then some like crazy brilliant person on Reddit comes up with like some weird theory that explains everything. <laughs> Even so, though come right, so theory, retro yeah. engineer it. Yeah. yeah. I I'm totally into that. That'd yeah. be a lot of fun. But I, I agree. I don't think they should do a direct sequel. I don't think that we, I don't need to see yeah. her fighting aliens in Texas. Right. Like I, I don't need to see that. But I don't think no, I don't think we will. I don't think we will, and I, I think they're smart enough to know that that's not the way they should go with it. Right. Um was there anything else crazy about the hype that anyone want to talk about beyond just the title, which really is the main reason why I think a lot of people even saw it? Right. I think the the only other thing that I, that I want to point out is, like, I think the, the movie and the script especially is super solid. So yeah. if it was, a, it, it doesn't, it didn't feel like a cash in to me. I mean, it totally, totally was. Oh, yeah. But they had the, in, in my mind, and I'm happy to argue this with people here if you disagree, they, they had like the goods to back it up. You know, they had a pretty, like a really, something I found really interesting. It's the best um, version of a cash in. Yeah. It was like, the best we, version have, a, of a we have a film here that probably won't make a lot of money. It's mm -hmm. some kind of mini sci fi thing in a bunker. How can we make this make the most money possible? Totally. And who's good at making a fuckload of money? J.J. Abrams. Yeah. So. There you go. <laughs> That's true. And how do you get people to see 
kind of like original characters yeah. in like a kind of an interesting thrillery situation. Because original sci-fi, I mean, sadly, does not do very well. Like every now and then you get like kind of a runaway hit like Looper did really well. Mm-hmm. But like most of the time it's kind of like they're OK. I yeah, think it's, it's tough because like it's expensive. Jumper. Too. It was a really good way to pull I liked in. that movie. Oh, God. Oh, you're the one. I, like the, I knew there's a fan out there somewhere. Ew, we're going to cool. gloss over that. Um, at, at least she likes the Doug Lyman movie. He doesn't yeah. get a lot of love. Uh, but yeah, I totally. I'm not very good at talking today. I agree with you in that because it's really great how I, I've had so many discussions with people who would be like, "Oh, I hate franchises," and then I'll be like, "So do you see these other films?" And I'll list things off, and they're like, "No, I really only I I saw the Marvel films." I'm like, <laughs> well, you hate franchises, but you saw that. So, Sounds like a miserable existence. <laughs> yeah. So, but so, but totally, people don't support they those don't, original. They things. don't support the original yeah. things. So it's a yeah. totally smart way to make an original film while kind of tying it into an existing franchise to just kind of hook those people Mm -hmm. who say they want original content but then they don't put their money where their mouth is yeah (laughs) yeah um i feel like there's been a bunch of stuff that came out this year that was original stuff that nobody ended up seeing and i'm I'm trying to remember what it was but it's all been obliterated by like the civil war suicide squad all all that stuff which also i love and i'll defend franchises too if they're done well um, like we pitched Green Room to a ton of people, and there's still a lot of yeah. most people haven't seen it. Same thing with Very uh, few Crimson people saw Peak. Green Room. Did most people didn't it. see Crimson Peak. Right. Nobody oh, saw Crimson Sing Street. Peak Sing Street was amazing. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that. It's so good. It's, uh, let's. Uh, I want to talk about the one thing that everyone left the theater talking about, which is John Goodman. He, oh, he made me so uncomfortable. He, yeah, yeah, and this like is, I can't even looking at a photo of him now. I'm just like, Ugh. I mean, how often do you hear like, ooh? possibly academy award winner john goodman like he's great and that's like actually getting oscar buzz out of like some little indie sci-fi film is mm-hmm. awesome I, yeah i think this it's also like he's such a fantastic actor and the script is so well written like like every line with that character specifically really sets up like who he is mm-hmm. he has a very specific character because sometimes you see these these movies and they have villains they're like he's just evil or he's whatever like it's it's really clear like he was in the military mm-hmm. he was working on satellites something weird happened where he got involved in the conspiracy because of that he has this like ocdness probably from the discipline of the military um you know there's an amount of lies with his family and stuff but some of that stuff was probably true with his real family which we can talk about the logistics of that Mm -hmm. and then it all comes to this guy who's just like a bottle of neuroses and so not aware and feels like he's owed things and clearly he snapped at some point because he kidnapped and murdered a girl yes Yes. his his level of delusion is so disturbing because he has no idea it's a delusion exactly he feels validated intensely validated because of the alien attack so then in his brain he's definitely never done anything wrong even the fact (laughs) that john goodman pulls that off I mean, fucking Fred oh, Flintstone yeah. pulls that off yeah. like <laughs> so well. He didn't really <laughs> pull off Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely pulled this off better than Fred Flintstone. Yeah. It's he, also uh, there's nothing because wor- that's true. The whole like a villain never sees themselves as a villain. Yeah, that there's no convincing him that he's in the wrong at any point because yeah. he did technically save both their lives, right. but he's also threatening them. Well, he did almost murder her to save her life but you don't know if that was actually he says that he did it as an accident he might have actually Do done you believe it as a word ac- coming out of his mouth because I, I sure fucking don't i, don't. I think he saw a pretty young girl on the See, road that's the qu- like, yeah. that's where the question mark is did he take Bunker, the advantage of a situation i'm gonna take not? you there yeah I, i'm pretty sure he's like i'm gonna I, smash the shit out of her car well and take her down to my rape bunker. But his, the best part was yes, he was, I agree with that. So I, there's two things I, I want to talk about. One is I I do think at the beginning the car at the gas station is his car, so he sees yeah he, sees he does her see there. her. Okay. And then there's there's also this interesting thing about like the the sexual violence of the movie, and I think the movie really smartly, as I saw it because I just did watch it again, was trying to posit him as. Um, a, a family like like he wants a father daughter relationship. It never it, really implies sexualness. It no, never he just really wants her to yeah. be a child. Yes, yeah. and and but to to that there is like a sexual purity. Like when she starts hitting on Emmett, um, he gets really angry. Yeah. and the anger isn't I want to fuck you. The anger is <laughs> right. No one gets to fuck. No her. one gets to fuck you because right. you're my daughter. Yeah. You're my little princess, which is what he Quote, does. Yes, <laughs> yeah. little princess. God, that Ugh. scene is so fucking Ugh. great. Yeah. I actually, I we I, 
here's the thing. That part of the scene is great. The next part of the scene with the Santa thing is like a little over the top for me. Yeah, I'm like, they, they kind of oversell This it. is like a little bit much here. Girl, what is she? She's Little older. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is Little all princess. fantastic. But yeah, I agree the Santa thing kind of oversells the moment a little bit. Yeah. And it's like, it's almost like, it almost felt like a sitcom trope almost yeah. where it's like. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there's, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Dan Tatchenberg is a, this is a first time director, right? He's done shorts and things. Yeah, but this he is his first like, major. He They've did that been trying short. to. They were trying yeah. to give him a feature oh, was, for I a long about. time. But I mean, like this is his first time with like a legit budget, making like mm-hmm. a legit feature with big time actors and stuff. So it, it, I think he's allowed a few like over that scene overstated sure. welcome a little bit. Like this scene could have been a little bit tighter. I mean, for I, a first time out of the gate. I mean, especially compared to like Lights Out, which we saw yesterday. I'm like, this guy knocked it out of the park. Oh, I totally agree. I think my my two complaints is that scene and then guys, and maybe this is a personal preference, but the the overscoring of things can drive me nuts a little now, bit. The music the, came the in whole really hot first, sometimes. I, if you look at the like, guy who wrote the score to this movie, he's done mostly these kind of like lower budget, either sci-fi or horror films, and every mm-hmm. one of them, you could have that same complaint. Mm-hmm. So I'm I not mean, sure if it's the use of the music or if it's the music itself. Yeah, I yeah, it's just like that. I get the idea of the whole beginning, like no talking. I think that's an interesting choice, but it's just like hammering you with the score, and I'm like, okay, enough with this. Mm-hmm. I get it. Jeez. That also could be a little bit of uh, Abrams leaning in because he kind of does that too with his movies. Yeah. Um, I felt it more the second viewing than I did the first. Right. Well, I right. think the first time it kind of, you don't really know what to expect from the movie. So like there's there's parts in the second act where I, I get, a, not bored is the wrong word, but I'm kind of like, all right, I know where this is going and that stuff's way more exciting than this. So get there. Let's get there. <laughs> um, was, so I'm, I'm not sure if the music is the same sort of thing. Whereas the first time I'm just so like, oh, what the fuck's going on? Mm-hmm. That it does not bother me, but. My, my experience with the beginning of the movie was uh, when I first saw it in theaters, I was immediately turned off by the overscoring, and I was not into that. And then when she gets hit by the car, uh, I was back in. And then when it has what I will argue is the greatest edit of 2016, Whoa. when mm. the car gets hit off the road, and it cuts to complete silence, and it says Paramount Pictures Presents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then it cuts back like to the car. Yeah. The yeah, audience was, good. was just, it was like a roar of laughter almost, because it was so shocking. Yeah. Um, and that just like got to people. They're like, it, it meant that people were so invested in what was happening and the movie was so effective to break that was almost like, oh, you revealed the trick, but it's like satisfying. I'm in a movie now. Oh, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it was just like the director, I feel like, or the editor, whoever did that being like, hey, let me show off for you. I can do that, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, which movie. I love. And I was like super, super into that. That's yeah. one of the few times where it like, calls out that you're watching a movie in a good way. Yep. Totally. Yeah. And with the editing and stuff like that, one of the things that I love about the movie so much, especially with the beginning, is there's so many moments in the beginning of story that pay off later in the film. Oh, yeah. With her sketches, then with the bottle, Mm -hmm. and with her ring and everything. That I think it's an engagement ring? Yeah. Yeah. So she was Mm -hmm. engaged. Um, Ben's no good. And it's all, like, so many of those (laughs) little moments come back, like, at the the bottle comes back at the very end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Like yep. you don't even think it's going to be, you just think that she needs to drink in the moment. So you don't realize it's going to be important. Right. And mm-hmm. it's I a very, love the, it's a well-planned yeah. movie. It's such, mm-hmm. I would love that type of foreshadowing when you really do it casually and it's not like a center of the film. <laughs> Let's hold on it for 30 seconds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, the movie was very good about that. Like when she goes to the air duct and she sees help scrawled on the, on mm-hmm. the thing, yeah. she goes down and, off the ladder and and sees the earring, but you don't know what it is. She just picks up something. And oh, yeah. the director is very good. It's like, like the see, like uh, this movie is all about the reveal of information in a yeah. very deliberate way. And that was another small example. And there's all these big examples that are super effective of her being like, "What did she pick up? What was that? I don't know." And then in the very next scene, you get that that satisfying moment. Well, versus if mm-hmm. they just showed it there, you'd be like, "Oh, it's an earring. Okay, I get it. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. now he shows the earring. I've already seen the earring, so I'm kind of bored by this." Yeah. It's it's such a great way of keeping the audience invested. Totally, because it keeps you like, "What what was that?" And then you get the payoff in the next scene. Whereas like. Uh, I don't know why I'm shitting on this movie, but uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2, which I actually enjoyed, <laughs> has a problem of doing something in a scene, then the next scene talking about what they just did in the scene before. Right. Oh, the exposition. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say yeah. something potentially controversial, but Spotlight was also like that. I have not watched Spotlight We didn't yet. see Spotlight. Yeah. What? I know that one's a shame. We kept mm. meaning to see it's it in theaters. I was too busy then... watching Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just like uh, Spotlight does have, have an issue, I feel, where every scene just they relitigate what happened in the previous scene yeah uh, um and 
I, I would posit it's screenplay? not the most effective. I would like to uh, say best picture. we like oh, to God. call that the I, Nolaning. Yeah. <laughs> be like, are you sure the audience knows what's going on? Let's make sure we have a character say what's going on. <laughs> I think th- some people make movies for people who like to walk away <laughs> yeah. and listen from their kitchen while they're getting a beer. Which I can appreciate yeah. when I'm in my kitchen. But yeah. when I'm sitting down for the whole thing, well, fuck right. you. <laughs> I don't want to see that in the theater. I'll watch it on Just Netflix. Just shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, we were kind of talking about her a little bit. Let's talk about more like performance and whatnot. Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, did, uh, who does not, I think, appear in enough movies. I know she's around, mm-hmm. but she's in the the show Brain Dead. I think she's the lead in that show. ABC I've not show, I don't summer even show. Know that show? Well, it's a show, and she's in it. <laughs> I just think she's fantastic. Um, I mean, she was easily my favorite part of Scott Pilgrim. Like, and I enjoyed Scott Pilgrim for what it was. Oh, but yeah. I, I yeah. forgot her. about her. Yeah. She's she steals a movie from <laughs> Mona that. Flowers. Yeah. yeah, so good in that movie. Um, I, I think the thing that's interesting about this movie, and then this will lead me a little bit off track to like what I think the secret weapon of this movie is, uh, but everything that she does has a level of intelligence and subtext to it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you see movies where the, the hero will be in a dangerous situation and then just tell the truth and it will be like, that's the worst thing you could do. <laughs> you could at least try to like trick somebody into not shooting you right. just to move forward. I feel like she's <laughs> always really calculating what she's about to say to try to get out of the situation. It's a very uh, Game yeah. of Thrones thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like playing to the top of her intelligence. And yeah. I love I love that idea. And I think it's, it's really great. And I think she pulls off the subtext well of that. Which yeah. is really oh, yeah. interesting because they talk about how she had issues growing up and how her brother protected her, I believe she says. Yeah. So she's always kind of been in survival situations and totally. she's mostly been flight. And yes. this is the one where she's really stuck into the fight mode and she handles it so smart, but it's like she, almost like her whole life has been preparing her for this moment. Tot- this time you can't run away. Totally. And it's in it's in a small moment at the beginning where she wakes up in the bunker and then she has the IV and everything and she like takes out the IV and she just like cries and then she looks and she's like oh I have a a little thing I can get my cell phone from this thing and then she decides to fight and that's like the first small moment and then she just keeps being tested that way it's great so if we're going back to that review I read earlier that there's no like bigger meaning to the story I'm like well this movie's all fight or flight yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. it's learning to decide to fight instead of fight (laughs) even the end of the movie is like you can run away or you can fight I mean it's all there yeah yeah I love the way she Mm -hmm. makes intelligent decisions unlike uh, (laughs) unlike a lot of horror movies like this one the protagonist did not stumble like she was on top of everything she's like locking him out and throwing the barrels in front of the door yeah. she's running away from him and knocking down the shelves and on top of him she's using the acid in her favor shaving the um crutch at the beginning yeah. oh yeah yeah she's very resourceful absolutely yeah. yeah but it's nice to have a protagonist that you don't feel like you're not like this is dumb right why yeah. are you being dumb <laughs> she Stop definitely being needs dumb. the other dude who has a broken arm to still protect her which he does, he does protect her successfully. He just gets killed for it. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. that was his great sacrifice, and it was always going to be. You know, she's making the uh, the, uh, the the gas suit, mask yeah. in the suit, and it's always going to be her that, that wears it. So, yeah, you know. I mean, he knew he. I, I think he knew from the very beginning he was going to die. I think so yeah. too. I, I think as soon as yeah. they started making that plan, he's like, "Oh yeah, then you can go up there and try to find help for us." He yeah. knew yeah. he was dead because she was like, yeah. "I only have enough materials for one suit." Yeah. Right. So it's the sorry. it's what really makes Emmett a wonderful character and it's yeah. sad for his character too because he he's remorseful for how he stuck himself into one box like yeah. the town his whole yep. life and then he just kind of accepts that he's going to be stuck in this box and die down there mm-hmm. mm. and it's like his his whole life has been stuck and then he just accepts it i guess right he does but he does it in the best way possible where he accepts it and he does it he's like all right well going for the greater good here yeah i mean this is really when we're talking about a movie bringing the goods, this is what we're talking about. Like oh, yeah. three really well-drawn characters, excellent scenes, excellent pacing. And then getting back to what I was saying about the secret weapon, I think the secret weapon of this movie is Damien Chazelle. So if you look at the script writing credits, it's these two guys and Damien Chazelle, mm-hmm. who is the writer-director of Whiplash, mm-hmm. which oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys should see if you haven't seen. And I feel like, he you know... He's my most anticipated movie for the end of the year. Yeah. That I mean, movie looks amazing. He's an amazing filmmaker. And you're talking about La La Land, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, he's an amazing filmmaker and an amazing writer. And he is able to write these scenes mm-hmm. in Whiplash where, you know, it's like these character-based, incisive kind of like conflict mm-hmm. scenes that have a level of thriller 
to them. And that to me is like all of John Goodman stuff. And yep. I, and my guess is, my educated guess is, a lot of that comes from him. Not to say it couldn't come from the other writers. I'm sure that like well, the no, pacing but is all fantastic. He's but involved, so. it, has, it has that flavor he to it. He knows how it's to like, write intense men. Yeah, and it's like yeah. that piece of it really worked really well for me and i'm like this is where it was getting me the way whiplash got me yeah he's yeah. really expert at um building dynamics with characters without yes. like special effects or violence or action just in words and it's like one of the mm-hmm. most fantastic things in movies that i miss well and one of the things like is specifically in uh in whiplash i mean we we talked a lot about it when we did our episode on it but there's a it, it, a lot of times you get these like kind of like one man versus one man or woman or whatever mm-hmm. it's kind of like cat and mouse so like, mm-hmm. who's the big one who's the small one the way that he does it in such a great way that it's never like the big guy versus the small guy. It's two just competing egos of yeah. probably equal strength, and he does it in a great way where you never feel like one of them's always outmatched by the other. Mm-hmm. It's more of how they're going to outsmart each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this one totally has the same thing. Like because you never feel like she is that. Um, forgetting her name in the movie, um, Michelle. 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 You never feel like Michelle's like totally boned by the situation. Right. It's more of like how is she going to get out of it? Not like oh God, can she get out of it? And that is such a well, it's just smart and well done because in different hands, this could have just been a tortured woman story. And right. that's, they yeah. totally never go that route. You're always rooting for her in the way of, I know she can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just, it's such a better written thing than I feel like could have if somebody else had written it. That's true. I like that she's like, <laughs> she seems like a real character, like a real yeah. person mm-hmm. and not some like helpless girl that's like, mm, right. I can't do anything. <laughs> You know, she's that's that would be such a more frustrating and boring. Movie I don't even to watch. know yeah. where this movie would go with that type of character. I mean, it was kind but of I, like, uh, what I was saying earlier is I feel like if this movie come out, let's say like three, four years ago, it might have gone that route yeah. where it was all about Emmett saving the day. Oh, yeah. That's and then what I was shoving her out the thing reversal. and then sacrificing himself when it explodes. Yeah. 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 Right. Because he kind of sacrifices himself in a dumb way. Like he could have figured out something like if like a smarter character, like I'm making a present for you or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. But. <laughs> But <laughs> he he tries to play to Howard's, uh, you know, Howard has like a sense of moral code. Right. He just misinterprets what Howard's moral code is, which is, you know, I'm owed things by helping you. Yeah. You owe right. me your respect because that's probably the thing he never got from his wife and daughter, question mark. I would assume um, so. And so possibly other people in the military. Yeah. He's possible. kind of crazy and exactly. conspiracy theory guy. Yeah. And so when that gets violated, he feels totally justified in shooting Emmett in the face, which is such a fantastic scene in terms of how that violence is that sharp and quick the thing is i totally expected emmett to die pretty much from the second they were making the one suit i'm like well emmett's gone right uh, <laughs> i was like i'm sorry buddy i did not expect it in that scene i right. knew that he yeah. was going to end up in that barrel and that could be because i'm a breaking bad fan but <laughs> um, i'm like there's no way that he, that barrel's not for emmett right i did not expect it coming in that, that scene. that moment right. it escalated yeah. quickly and it I really did it. or like he'd well, wait to kill him when she wasn't in the room exactly yeah, yeah something like exactly. that well it escalated quickly and then it diffused yeah. and he's like i accept your apology and you're like oh man they got out of it again what uh, <laughs> yeah happened uh and and I, then I she gets ice cream effective. before dinner so everything's yeah. fine exactly. so weird yeah and he has no compunction of killing in front of her because he's like i protected you from this person right yeah you're my daughter like of course you'll you'll come to understand what i did yeah, yeah. we'll be a happy family yeah um mm-hmm. can i go back and ask a, i know i'm getting so off topic but That's a fine. question about john goodman what do you guys think happened to the original Megan, who is not Megan, but like clearly he killed the girl her. that Emmett went to high school with. Yeah, she ended up in a barrel. Yeah, yeah but sure. why? <laughs> it's really interesting to speculate. She probably tried to escape. Oh, well, I, I mean, like, I'm, yeah. guess, she, I'm guessing she, she's the one who wrote "Help" she in did. that window. I'm totally. sure because it's so, her earring. Well, Brian yeah, recently had me watch or not watch read of Mice and Men, mm-hmm. and I think it was probably a situation like that where he just was trying to get her to calm down to understand. Mm. Like, I don't mean to hurt you, but I want to do this. And mm-hmm. then she would be freaking out, and he'd try to restrain her and either accidentally kill her or just know that in his survival moment that if he, she, like, even in people's, like, deranged minds, mm-hmm. they know that they're doing something inherently wrong. Mm. So if she would get out and tell on him, then his whole life would be destroyed. Right. Interesting. So in so his he went his full Lenny on her? yeah in his survival <laughs> moment he probably killed her out of like a subconscious need to protect himself, and then he definitely came up with a different story in his brain. Right. Yeah. <sighs> I think it's interesting like characters like that that are have like a level of narcissism or pathology, and it's like if Mary Elizabeth Winstead 
if there was a different character who played along with him, there's no way that character would get out of that bunker alive. Like uh-huh. eventually she'd trip on some line or something would happen right. like you're talking yeah. about and he would kill her. Like, oh, it's absolutely. just bound and to feel happen. totally justified. Yeah. Feel totally justified. If she hadn't done that. Yeah. Then it yeah. forced yeah. my hand. <laughs> the interesting thing is now, do you think, cause I agree that I, I, as much as I like to call it the rape bunker, because that's totally what it feels like. Um, I don't think the relationship was ever, at least intentionally in his mind or initially, uh, a sexual relationship. Right. Um, do you think that, so Megan number two, we'll call her, uh, do you think that he assumed that Megan number two was his daughter? Like, do you think he was that delusional where oh, it's like, maybe. oh, this girl is actually my daughter now? Interesting. Mm, but, or is it just I like, I'm going to call this girl, like, is it role playing or is he like that delusional where he's like, no, and that's why he always referred and to also, her as his daughter. Yeah. And like, what did he say to her? Because there legitimately was an attack. It's like, when thinking about the movie, like, a lot of the stuff they said, it's like, oh, it's all of the above. Like, all of it is true. Right. Uh, yeah. Versus, like, some stuff true. Some, it's like, did he abduct her and say there was an attack again? Or did he say he probably... Or did he just say, hey, we're going to live in this bunker together. Yeah. And you can't get out. But like, you're my daughter, so we're cool. Like, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think it was a weird kidnapping. Because he didn't treat Michelle like... He didn't call her Megan or anything. But right. do you think he would have started if they had stayed in the bunker after a little maybe, while? Maybe. No, maybe that's what... No, because I think it's her. an escalating <laughs> delusion that he had. So I think he... Well, because like, it didn't start out that way. Because when they first started, he was not calling her a child or a woman. And it just kept getting worse and worse. Where he calls her a little princess. Right. So do you think mm. it, the more they're alone, the more oh. it starts going to, hey, you're not Michelle, you're Megan. Like, would it slip up every once Can in a you while? And- remind me that um, that Paris shirt that she has on was the, the Megan number two wearing that in, in the photo. Yeah. In the yeah. photo with John Goodman or in her class photo? In her, in with John yeah. Goodman. So I think. I think it you're, you might be onto something. It might be an escalating thing. Like he, those maybe were originally Megan's clothes, and he handed them to her. And as she like dressed more like his real daughter, he started to believe in his mind that she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. So I mean, he is definitely fucked in the head. Yeah. But it's, totally. It just makes him that much better of a character. Yeah. 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 And, I love the way and, that yeah. it, when you, as soon as you are introduced to him, the way that he walks into the room and doesn't say anything for long enough, like you know. That whether or not what he's saying is true, that he's fucked in the head. Oh, yeah. And it's also yeah. really sad because if he is ex-military, like he said, and saw the things he saw, I mean, he's kind of like... No, where was the VA to help him? Yeah, he was <laughs> kind of really like need the, better support for our troops. the worst case scenario for PTSD. Right. Totally. Like, yeah. Where you yeah. don't get the care you need, this is the type of shit that can happen. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think, um, it, and going back to the father-daughter thing, like that relationship is so much more interesting to me than like a sexual violence style relationship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then if you watch the choices, because I was interested in watching re- when I was rewatching it about that issue specifically, like the choices for Mary Elizabeth Winstead in terms of like, you know, at the beginning she's in her underwear, but it's like pretty modest, you know, right. like you Let's, could see when, like And it's only a out of necessity. Yeah, right. and a grosser version of the movie being like, oh, she like looks sexy here or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> well, that's, like it's when, much more interesting. I watched it when I got home from work were last night. Chewie from was watching it. And I'm like, you know, I like the first, say, 15 minutes of this scene, a girl's in her underwear and it's in no way sexualized. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, mm-hmm. the, uh, again, that just shows more power to the director. Like, yep. well done. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Because there's a lot of directors like, well, she's got to be in her underwear because otherwise he went to be able to get this knee brace on her. Michael, but, hey, she's in her underwear, so at least let's have fun with that. And they the, just don't go that route at the all. Mi- yeah. The Michael Bay effect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to talk about um, Emmett? Yes. We need, to, we need to talk about the Tony Award winning actor. <laughs> John Tony Gallagher Award. Jr. Which I figured out the reason I had felt like I had known him before was not because of Broadway. It's because he was on Newsroom. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was in Newsroom. Um, but this guy is, he's an amazing actor. He's won a Tony Award for Spring Awakening. Hmm. and uh, He never got to sing in this movie. Nope. Mm-hmm. Didn't get to sing in this one. If you listen to the soundtrack, <laughs> he's got one hell of a voice. Inter- I never knew that. I mm-hmm. would have never guessed. Oh, I, I recognize his name from Short Term 12. That was one of my favorite movies of 2013. That was the first That one. is a That's phenomenal when I first movie. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he's that phenomenal in that movie. I didn't too. notice it was the same actor. He does a great job playing he just, Emmett. He looks quite yeah. a bit yeah. different with he's a beard. A, yeah. It, it turns out this guy, I mean, he's a pretty good actor. Turns out he can act, this yeah. guy. <laughs> I mean, I guess that from, uh, from the Tony Award. Yeah. It helps when you have a gold statue on your mantle to prove that you can act. But, but you know, <laughs> you know they, that doesn't put you in movies, unfortunately. That's no, usually it, it doesn't. Yeah. Like, it doesn't, like, uh, you look at Neil Patrick Harris, who's won a bunch. Right. He's in a movie every now and then. Yeah, a Harold and Kumar movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah beauty and the beast yeah yeah i mean he was but, good in gone girl but yeah oh yeah he was that's yeah. right um but yeah um john gallagher jr i want to see more of him absolutely yeah like, like, he made he the transition so beautifully. good in this yeah because it was kind of like what we were saying a moment ago with um 
a smarter character could have talked his way out of the scene yeah. instead of just like, oh, I want her to respect me the way she respects you. Blam. Right. Like, he could have said something like, I was either making a present or uh, I know she likes making clothes because we've talked about it. So sure. I'm collecting these so she can start making clothes as a hobby. Like it is so easy to explain away, but he's not a smart character. No. He's kind of an idiot. Otherwise, he wouldn't have boxed himself into the town his whole life. I still mm-hmm. don't, That's the one question I have with the movie, really, is how did he find those items and not everything else? Had to be a mistake. I, it, where did they leave them? What do you mean, find... Oh, oh, how did he, Howard find those? Yeah, because he got yeah, the scissors, with... he's got the razor blade, and he got some duct tape thing? Something like that, yeah. I don't know. And, yeah, so why weren't those with everything else I just, missed that probably yeah, yeah. they don't need it i didn't need to know that i don't think My i was wondering that i want to know really i was oh. like wait but where are the other items like i have more of a problem with them? the iphone that she mentioned earlier yeah. than yeah. i do with this okay. <laughs> this is just like oh, whatever it's a bunker they're getting so used to the routine that uh, yeah. it's a it's a fair point i try to do a thing where like if in movies if something is plausible i just kind of try to take it on faith it it helps me so i don't get too yeah. crazy about movies i'm like yeah yeah i guess that's plausible like like they had it in their pocket at one point and then yeah. they went to the bathroom and, and then they like, left it next to the toilet exactly. i don't know yeah. <laughs> well the interesting thing about what you're saying is it would have been maybe nice to see from like a character perspective like whose fault it was yeah you know yeah. like if she you have no idea if michelle left them somewhere and it causes it's like Emmett's death then there's there's that like level yeah exactly yeah. that level of guilt that could also be why they cut it out yeah it could be just like it, maybe they did film that and it was her fault and they're like i think she's got enough shit going on <laughs> yeah there's also to that to that i thought the pacing like the that wonderful review you read at the beginning like yes. i love the pacing of this movie i felt like oh, every yeah. time i started to get bored there was something else was happening you know there was like oh the air filter's not working yeah. oh here's a bucket of like magic chemical that dissolves and also lights on fire um, you know what came at the perfect time was the uh, the other woman when she's almost yes. out, yeah. and then the woman shows oh, up, and you're yeah. like, oh shit! And the trailers all made it look outside. like it was the end. Yeah, I thought if so you too. watch the trailers and make it look like that's the end of the movie, like oh, yeah. she's making a break for it. Yeah, like, yeah. No, that's right in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's a that's a always a hard scene to watch in any movie when you have to be like, you want you know the the good guys to be the good guys, right? But then you know sometimes you have to do something really shitty, like not let a melting woman into your place. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah, because to be the good guys, you have to be alive for the rest yeah. of the movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Um, and I sorry. I finally figured out why I knew that woman. She's a uh, the replacement for um, the one boss on Silicon Valley. That's uh, who I thought it was when I watched it the second time. Huh. I was like, it's like, why did I always feel like I that knew looks you? Like That's her. funny. Yeah. Well, much like this movie that we're talking about, I think the last thing we should talk about is the aliens. Yeah, that really come out of left I field. I don't know. I still don't know how I feel about it. Honestly, I, I thought I'd have more of a definitive point of view after watching. It, I think for the third time now, I was like, you know what? I'm sure by some point. I'm going to have a really strong feeling about this, but I just don't. It's not like I dislike it and I don't love it either. It's just kind of like, the thing it's that, cool to watch. Oh, I yeah. like it. Yeah. I like it when she's, she makes it out and then it's like, uh, it almost wor- would have worked better if we didn't see the weird chemical thing. But I guess at the same time, you don't know that it's aliens necessarily. So when she comes out of the bunker, she sees the birds flying. She takes off her thing and then, oh shit, an alien spaceship in the background. See, that's where I'm it not... It just kind of looks that like that a, I a ship. I, yeah. I think the, the reveal is fucking amazing. Yeah, it looked like I a like helicopter that. in the distance to her yeah. and to us for a second yeah. and then it shows it again and it's like, no, that and thing's it's got tentacles. And it's like, yeah. oh <laughs> shit. Yeah. Well, Which my it, favorite line in the whole movie is at that moment. It's <laughs> where we'll we get to quotes. Yeah, when, when it turns and comes at her yeah. is the yeah. moment where you're like, that's not how a helicopter really? works. Right. Yeah. Huh. The thing that is interesting is like when I first watch it, I was like, because the movie is so fun to watch for the whole, like mm-hmm. I was so invested and the audience was like really vocally responsive. Um, and then when you get to that moment, you're like, what the hell is going on? Mm-hmm. Are really? Is this what's happening? And there's some level of enjoyment in that when you first see yeah. it. Yeah. But then also I'm like, I get it's like a whole different thing. It's like it, a whole different movie. But that you're yeah. having essentially the same emotions that she's having. Yeah, yeah. which because is true. Yeah. Yeah. she didn't really fully believe that it was an alien invasion. Totally. Right. And then, well, they never said fully. Adv- they just said they like, it could have been this. Yeah, it could have been know. so many different things. Yeah. It could have been all the lie. The Russians, the South Koreans. Yeah. yeah. And then she gets out, and it's the most absurd yeah. 
version of anything. Yeah. <laughs> it, there's an I, alien dog with a vagina face trying to kill her. And so. it's just like, no, that's when it get, went from the point of, oh, that's a cool reveal to we need to get to the end of the film. And they're like, let's write in some alien action. And then he comes and smashes the car. And then she Independence Days, the big flying ship as she's being sucked up to I it. I think you're thinking of War of the Worlds because she did it the same yeah. way Tom Cruise yeah. killed a spaceship in War of the uh, Worlds. I'm thinking, the, was it, who is I, it in I've Independence never seen Day, War of the Worlds, Worlds the way. movie. I thought they all died because of germs. Yeah, but he has to kill one of the ships first. He, he does it with a grenade, grenade instead of a multiple cocktail. You should watch it. It's right. a good movie. It, it's surprisingly legit. I like it. Yeah, it's it still Spielberg. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Spielberg knows how to make it. You know movies. how I feel annoyed at Spielberg sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. This is, yeah. So that That's all felt thing. rushed. Like the little bird beak thing inside the tentacle was a little nonsensical. I, I wish it was more like just an alien spaceship and they're not weird half beast beings, but... See, I'm, I'm kind of okay with that even. It was really just the whole, like, I, I feel like the whole action sequence overstayed its welcome by, like, five minutes. Yeah. I, my, I, sorry, my favorite part of the whole sequence then was the end of it, where she's in the car, yeah. and she tunes into the radio, and they're like, we need help in Houston, and she drives off, and the, the lightning reveals the big giant ship. Yeah. That's See, cool. I, really honestly, well I have a different feeling towards it, and I'll use an allegory, kind of like how you have a worm that goes into a chrysalis and becomes a butterfly. She was a worm when she was just a general person living her life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then the bunker is her chrysalis, and she has to fight her way out. Yeah. And it's never pretty. And if you help mm. anybody in that situation, it'll die. So no, I, I'm totally fine with all that, and I like the scene. I just think it's a little too long. I kind of. I, I didn't need to see the. Again. I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed that she had to go hide again, and then figure out another re- way to get out. Yeah. I enjoyed the mm-hmm. play with noise <laughs> with the car, mm-hmm. and then her having to, you know, go through the disgusting body to get the keys. I don't know. That's cool. That was all good. Where'd the dog alien go? What do you mean? Back into the cornfield. Yeah, so why didn't it kill her after she blew up the ship? Oh, I assumed that it got picked up by the ship it the same way away. it got dropped down. It just runs well, away. Well, it, it doesn't oh. come back because well, she's we never Well, we it. never see that. Oh, so that's yeah. another, like, you, you guess that it just kind of totally. died but, but with But that's the where ship. I start kind of, like, that's where I can start poking holes in the end of this thing because it just feels like <laughs> that whole thing was just a little too rich. Well, why was <laughs> the ship hiding behind the house to make a big dramatic light sequence? I'm like, <laughs> because I it can. Like <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's beautiful, I like but why? I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's no real reason. Over the top, get from this point to the end of the movie. It was just beautiful. And I can enjoy it, and it's a lot of fun, but I just wish it was, like, Eh, five minutes short. I, I think the thing that it it almost inherently had to be a little disappointing because the mystery of the movie is super satisfying. And to be in that state yeah. of like, what the hell is going on is like nervous and tense and fun. And like, I get a lot of enjoyment out of that. So like when that goes away and they're like, oh, it's aliens, you're like, oh, well, I'm missing that mystery now. So I feel like I should be a little bit more disappointed. The other thing I'll point out is when it's done at its best, like, the whole movie, they're like, it's aliens, it's aliens, it's aliens, and you get out and it's aliens. Like, <laughs> when you have a movie, like, the first time I watched Fight Club or something, and I was younger and I was like, I didn't I didn't catch it, and then when the reveal that it's the same person, you're like, oh, now the rest of the movie has a whole different context and mm-hmm. makes a lot more sense and yeah. how's all that stuff. Like, there wasn't that, that surprise to the ending, which may have been like literally impossible to figure out a way to do that with this yeah, movie right but they're they're still like that dynamic is a little bit more satisfying because then you're like oh in retrospect all this stuff makes more sense but you know i, I don't know so that's why i'm like a little split on it like i mean yeah, I, 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 I agree with everything she was saying about her fighting and it all character makes sense and then I, maybe i agree with brian too about it, it was a little <laughs> bit too long yeah, I I, I, I I still like it. I still think it's great, and I think they did a good job with it for what they had, especially for very little budget. And this, the, I think the effects look good, and I've seen a lot of complaints about the effects. I think it looks decent. I like the little weird scaly vagina face dog thing. <laughs> um, if you if you keep calling it, I never thought of it as a vagina. Oh my god! Look at all the look at both. I the thought it was a vagina. This, uh, I total, definitely thought both the the thing that she throws a Molotov cocktail into, yeah. and the dog face yeah. are see, totally modeled after when vaginas. I when I see the dog face thing, I think those leeches that are in lakes that all attach themselves to you that are giant <laughs> leeches. And then when I saw the ship, Which I think of faces. the mouth of a <laughs> squid when it's opening and closing yeah. its beak. Those also are the things I thought about. Also have vagina faces. Well. Also, the well, the, the 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 dog face thing was on the end of a long shaft, so it was a vagina on the end of a penis. Yeah, it's basically. a very <laughs> sexual movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I think we've said enough. Is there any like final points people want to make? I'm really excited that this movie happened, and I'm oh, yeah. super excited to see this other movie that Dan keeps talking about that he's been shooting in England, and he's now expecting a child. So oh. Dan Tractor Birds is have living the life, dudes. Is he? What's he working on now? Is that? Oh, uh, he podcast? keeps a hush hush. He just makes quibs about being in England every now and then. Interesting. Mm. You know, I'd be super into it. I think he's great. I'm just into it because he's Harriet the Spy's brother. 
Huh? I didn't know that until I, I recognized his Michelle, name. Yeah. Michelle Trachtenberg's, Trachtenberg's brother. brother. Uh, Jackie, is there any of the final points you want to make about this movie that we missed that you didn't get to say? I think everything came together well, and it mm-hmm. was great. I think if anything was a little bit different, I don't think it would have worked. Yep. It's a fine, well-balanced film. Absolutely. Yeah. Ryan, any other points? Uh, no, I just want to uh, echo that the editing was fantastic in so many ways, and the writing was, was great, and it's a great movie. Brett, anything? Uh, the only thing I'll say is I'm excited for the whenever Cloverfield 20 or 3 or whatever <laughs> yeah. gets released, uh, like with like one month of notice, I'll be super excited for that movie because yeah. I'll be like, oh, I'm excited to see another weird, yeah. small strange twilight zone thing i love that there's like an entire i'm not sure if it's an entire subreddit there's a big chunk of reddit that's trying to look through all of jj abrams like upcoming projects and Uh try to figure out which one is the cloverfield movie (laughs) right (laughs) right 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 it's like good luck guys i'm pretty sure it's not on imdb (laughs) right yeah (laughs) um let's move into quotes 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 uh i'm gonna go first so that nobody steals mine because i'd be very upset um my favorite quote of the movie uh is I accept your apology. <laughs> that's a good one. Because it's such a great moment. It when, is, did, when did they say that? When was that? Uh, oh, that's right when, before they shoot him in right the face. Right before they shoot him in the face. Right, yeah. right, right. Because it is, yeah, exactly yeah. what you said. It's like, the, how the fuck did they get out of this? Up, oh, they didn't. Such a great <laughs> cowboy line. Yeah. Oh, boy, they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, I think John Goodman genuinely accepts his apology. Absolutely. Sure. Like, he's not, he's not pretending to... It's subtextless. Like he's not pretending to not accept his apology. Right. There's just this other thing he has to do because of it. Right. It doesn't. He yeah. feels make like up it's his anything. duty. Yeah, exactly. I accept your apology. Sadly, since you did it, you still have to die. Right. Yep. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, awesome moment. My favorite quote is when she gets out of the bunker, stands on top of that uh, truck, sees the alien ship coming towards her, and goes, "Oh, come on." <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Like, I'm not done yet. <laughs> There's it's so good. There's something about those like fourth wall breaking moments <laughs> yeah. that are if you use them every once in a while, they're just so satisfying. It just made her more human. Yeah, because that's how we're, she's like the audience surrogate at that point. And we're like, is this where we're going? And she's like, is this where we're going? I'm right here. <laughs> uh, and the filmmaker is just like, this is where we're going. So let's like <laughs> this is it. try to get them into it. I'll go next. Get okay. go for okay. it. Okay, my favorite quote is from John Goodman. He said, crazy is building the ark after the flood has already come. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good line. Which, I mean, it's true, you know? Yeah. He was prepared. There is a I mean, he's little, still crazy, but yeah. he was prepared. There is a little survivalist in me where I look at the things in our apartment some days and be like, all right, if shit went in the fan, what's going to be the most useful? <laughs> Do we have extra water that we can grab real quick? What right. are we going to put the rats in? Like, which bag? We can't take the cages. <laughs> yeah, there is. When the, when the earthquake comes, I'm like, what will my what will happen like will i immediately just die on the street or will i become like a rick grimes type leader probably immediately die on the street right yeah Um, oh i'm i definitely fully admit to myself that i'm gonna be one of those people of unless i know you i ain't gonna save you i'm sorry (laughs) i don't need dead weight well i'm glad good for you Uh, i like i'm in the known category yeah Yeah. (laughs) i like the idea of like the the earthquake apocalypse happens in LA and there's warlord Chewie of Burbank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, guys. It's all <laughs> just about me survival. Going, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta stick with the wife though. Good luck. <laughs> You'll be in like really your Ninja fighter. Turtle shirt while she's in full like raider yeah. armor with spikes <laughs> and helmet. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll do a quote. So I I'm happy nobody took this, but um, John Goodman said, "I know I seem like a sensible guy." But at the time, I wasn't myself. And that's... <laughs> I love that quote. When he's describing uh, that he crashed into her, slash he's saying that he crashed into her and not ran her off the road. Right. right. And I love, like, it just... It, there's so much subtext there, but it says everything you need to know about the character. Yeah. Because he truly... He's lying, <laughs> but he believes he's a sensible guy. Yeah. And he probably wasn't himself at the time, too. He probably because, thinks it was an accident. Yeah, he may even he think... He just it, lost control for a brief moment. Yeah, he might even think that. He might, yeah. he, you know, he might have that. And so you hear that, and it got a huge laugh laugh in the audience because people are like, this is the most deluded character you can ever oh, yeah, imagine. Yeah. And, and this is like the, the window into his psychosis. And there, I, I just loved it. There's so many reasons why I really hope the Academy steps up and at least gives him a nomination for yeah. this. It's one of the best jobs he's ever done in a yeah. movie. Uh, so my favorite quote is the the great comedic moment uh, where Michelle is looking through the magazine and she holds up a picture and says, look, look at this. We can use this. And Emmett goes, what? Ten new ways to style your bangs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you also had the moment of the the Koreas, which yeah, I thought yeah. was pretty good. Oh, yeah. so, North Korea. Is that the crazy one? Yeah. Okay, that one. <laughs> <laughs> he truly never gotten out of his hometown. No. No. <laughs> no. God, he was really good in this. There's a lot of quotable John Gibb. Like, as I was writing that, Absolutely. I wrote down the art, art quote. The other one that I wrote down was in the very beginning when he's like, you know, there's an attack up there. And you're like, okay, he's a little weird. It could be the Russians. They're working on stuff. And you're like, okay, this guy might be crazy. And then, he's, <laughs> and then you, he goes, and if the Martians came here, you don't know what they would do. And you're right. like, oh, this guy's so crazy. <laughs> Definitely crazy. And it totally, like, puts you on Michelle's side yeah. to later on reverse you, which is just smart, smart writing, man. Yeah. This movie's mm-hmm. very smartly written. I'm still very impressed mm-hmm. with how well this thing turned out. Mm-hmm. Um, but now it's time for the review system, which this one I'm trying to be as nice as I can with the review systems lately because I don't like making people sweat. Um, so I'm just going with straight up alien movies, not part of the alien franchise. Just yeah. Although if you want to, you're <laughs> welcome to any movie with aliens in it. Hmm. I'm going to. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go, no, go ahead. No. I need some people to go before me. Yeah. Okay. I got one. I, I'm going to jump on District 9. Nice oh, choice. Yeah, because I thought it was like a great uh, gritty and uh, plays with your emotions and your ideas of what's real and what's not. That's funny. Jackie? Um, <laughs> I'm going to say Signs. Damn it. A good Ouch. choice. Yes. Yeah. God, I hate that movie. I had that in mind, I too. like that, I like movie. that movie. I think too. it's you... one of his very few good movies. Yeah. I think it's Next to The Sixth Sense. Um, but you also are questioning, well, what do these aliens look like in that right. movie? And you kind of see it towards the end. And in that newsreel segment on TV, when you see the alien walk by and you're like, oh. Yeah, that was yeah. a great jump scare. Yeah. Like. yeah. And this movie had a better ending without like a, a weird glasses all over the room. Yeah. Without this weird, like, <laughs> why did your wife have some premonition about Joaquin Phoenix swinging a bat? That's the stupidest movie. Oh, I know what I'm going <laughs> to do. I could go for hours about why. And I, I hope I'm not taking yours, honey. I have a bad feeling you're about to, but go for it. I'm sorry. Attack the block. Son of a bitch! <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Good one. <laughs> That's a good one. It's a movie about these people that never really expected to be one, fighting aliens, two, in a big survival situation, and mm-hmm. three, takes place pretty much in one place, even though, you know, they had an entire building and attacked the block. You're rooting for them the whole time, and a few of them die. Mm-hmm. You feel real bad, and the aliens are very menacing, and you feel like it's almost impossible to beat them for a little bit there. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, honey. It's fine. Brett, do you have one? I need to think of another one. <laughs> uh, I was going to say signs. Sorry. But that got taken. Attack the block. <laughs> it's okay. it's I wasn't nice. going to say, but that's brilliant. It and is. that got taken. Oh, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Do you have something? I'm, I'm working on something. <laughs> I have something, but it's a reach, man. Uh, uh, you know, I'll go for it. I'm going with Critters. There you go. Oh, God. Uh, critters. Ugh. Sorry. Not ugh, I'm because sorry. it's a bad movie. That critters movie gets just... an ugh, but Signs doesn't. Uh, I can go. For, I could do an entire hour and a half. I can't on watch Science, that movie. One of the worst movies ever made. Um, I know it's. It, it just makes me uncomfortable. Critters, I'm going with strictly because it's a group of people on a farm uh, who have no idea how to deal with the aliens. Mm-hmm. And they just kind of go, what the fuck are these things? And they have a very good moment, kind of like Mary Liz Weinstein's of, oh, come on. <laughs> and it's just these little bastards who just basically want to destroy everything, kind of like the aliens in this one. Um, but for me, I, I, the main reason why I like it so much is kind of like how I, why I like Ten Cloverfield Lane so much. Of This movie just kind of, as a kid for me, is just like, what am I watching? <laughs> I kind of like this. And kind of like 10 Cloverfield Lane, it's like, oh, I guess I'll see a sequel to Cloverfield. For me, that seems like a weird choice. Seeing but that no, movie really as a like child, it. it unsettled me to <laughs> the degree I still can't watch it. So again, I still worry that when I go get water in the middle of the night, there will be some red eyes peeking at me from the alley. <laughs> and it's just like, ugh. Just feed them dynamite. <sighs> it works. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try one. Okay. And I'm going to have to justify it. But the only reason why I'm going here is because some really good ones are taken, and this is by far the worst one. I'm going to go with um, Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. <laughs> oh, boy. And here's, really? and here's okay. why. You have a nefarious father figure who is emotionally trying to emotionally abuse a younger person with a uh, parent-child relationship in there. And... You have an army of aliens, even though they're clones or robots. You have an army invading something. So there's something there. It's like that part of it meets child abuse meets Desmond from Lost. There are some super <laughs> awkward dinner scenes. 
<laughs> it attacked the clones. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. There are some terrible, awkward dinners. Awkward for a different reason. But uh, yes. See? It's just the connections all over the place. They're the same movie almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay. So two of these choices greatly upset me, but that's okay. Um, we're going to move into uh, plugs here in just a moment. But stick around after plugs for the answer to this question, who should be the star of the next Cloverfield movie? So you can follow us on Facebook at After the Hype. You can follow us on Twitter at ATH underscore podcast and everywhere else at just ATH podcast. You can follow me on Twitter, although I don't know why you would, at YBrianY. And Instagram, again, I don't know why you would, at Sensor Lord, Spencer Cell with a Z. Chewy? Uh, you can find me as Chewy9 on most social media platforms. All spelled out, one word, and not... With an I-E and not a Y. Cool. Uh, Ryan? Uh, follow me on Instagram at Audio Adventures. Jackie, what about you? I don't really care for people to follow me. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> don't look for that's Jackie. A, that's yeah. a fair answer. <laughs> Google image search Jackie Trudeau. They can see yeah. you on IMDb and see what you've worked oh, on. Oh, see all the horrible Lifetime movies that I've done. Uh, hey, yeah. I'm in one of the, uh, not the one that you really? worked on, no. but I'm in a Lifetime He's movie. in oh, okay. My Santa. I am. For a That's so no. funny. What do you I, play? I don't play anything. I was somebody who was like, we need an extra in this scene. Just go stand oh. in the background. We won't, we're not going to do anything with you. And then when I finally saw the movie, they punch in on me. I think awesome. they did that on purpose. <laughs> oh my God. Because they probably great. thought it was funny too. I look horrible. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been working 16 hours and I'm just sweaty and gross and wearing a very heavy flannel shirt in 99 degree heat. <laughs> Just dying. And oh. like, yeah, let's focus on that guy. And it was a Christmas movie? Of course. That's yeah, hilarious. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah starring Matt Lawrence. Things. At least no one important saw it. That's true. Uh, Brett, what about you? Where can people find you online? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Brett, B-A-W. Uh, and then also uh, I do this New York Times web series called Verbatim, which you guys should check out if you Google New York Times Verbatim. Uh, and then uh, also go over to my buddies that do honest trailers at uh, youtube.com slash screen junkies. I don't work there anymore, but uh, I love those guys. Yeah, they do good, good people. We watch yeah. their stuff. Yeah. I, I really don't know anyone who doesn't. Yeah. I so, did. So you helped kick off something very popular. There's lots yeah. of people that I run into at work, mostly older guys that don't have an idea what I'm talking about. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's at my job when I started, nobody did. Now everyone does because I make them all watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. Uh, contribute to the Batman v Superman honest trailer so I, I have to cough up that nice. and I apologize Chewy. No it's fine. <laughs> no, we, 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 we just watched it. It's a very, we understand it's a the good complaints yeah. but we still like it. I just happen to disagree. Yeah. That's it. I mean we can't complain with the Martha argue the no, Martha that's thing. The, the Martha thing ever. though I love the Martha <laughs> thing because of all the internet things they gave us. Oh uh, the how it should have ended is, Oh my god. They do such a great job with Why'd you say that name? Don't say that name. <laughs> Don't say that name. Say mom like a normal person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so our final question of the day. Who should star in the next Cloverfield movie? Uh, I'm going to go first because this is the guy I want to star in everything because I love him as heterally as I can. Logan Lerman because he's fantastic and I think he can do anything. I'm going to go. The thing that I think is important for a Cloverfield movie is like somebody not too famous. So I'm going to go with this actor, Zach Woods who is a comedy guy. He was on The Office for a little bit. Oh, yeah. He was in In the Loop. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like the tall guy, and uh, he would be like the version of a Cloverfield movie where like, is he a crazy stalker, <laughs> or is he just kind of an awkward guy? Wait, is he playing the, the John Goodman role? He would play or the, the Mary Elizabeth He Lutz would play dead? like the John Goodman role. Okay. I'm going to say Johnny Depp, just because I like Why not? him a lot. There you know? go. <laughs> he, sh he should play the alien. Yeah. He basically already is an alien. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with the entire cast of Silicon Valley. Ooh, oh. well, maybe just you go. the people from Silicon Valley because I think watching <laughs> them, I like watching them deal with just menial problems like toilet paper and shit. So you or, want them to be playing their characters yes. from Silicon Valley? Yes. <laughs> I'd be like, so your like data compression is totally not important anymore unless they go full like Independence Day with it and it becomes important in some weird way <laughs> like that. Awesome. <laughs> I'd watch the shit out of that movie. I would be second, <laughs> second in line. Yeah, I, I'd be there. First day. First day. <laughs> what did they make? Oh, I gotta watch that. <laughs> Silicon Valley meets Independence Day meets Cloverfield. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> Ryan, you got one? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you who I immediately want to see more of is uh, the girl from Stranger Things. She played oh, Nancy, yeah. Natalia Dreyer, mm -hmm. uh, or Dyer. I would like to just see her more, and she's already uh, proven that she can fight monsters. 
Nice. What's her last name? Dyer. Natalia Dyer. All right. So that's it. Thank you very much for Brett and Jackie for coming out. Thank you. Thanks. And bye. 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 bye.